Hi there, welcome to part 2 of 3 of our body photo fitting series. In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to do body photo fitting for four-legged animals such as dogs or cats. In this example I'm going to use an elephant. I'll just use the normal procedure and load up my image from the actor creator. As you can see my background is already masked out as this is a transparent PNG. Now for four-legged animal photo fitting, the matte shape step is really important. You can't use the reference image on the right as it's a human with only two legs. You'll want to take off the mirror option right away because this isn't going to be your typical body photo fitting. Make sure that you've selected the side profile tab as this character is definitely not front facing. The neck and hip indicators will go, well, where the elephant's neck and hip are. Pretty straightforward stuff. This will make your character horizontal. The next thing to note is which numbered markers correlate with which arm. If you take a closer look at the side reference image, you'll see that numbers 1 and 5 are reserved for the limbs that are at the back. Do the same thing with your elephant image and make sure that the rear limbs are marked by markers 1 and 5. Then move on to the next step, which is rigging the skeleton. In this step, you'll want to set up the skeleton to roughly follow what I'm doing here. I'm placing the foot markers slightly below the elephant's feet, and white markers around each joint area. The number 2 marker goes where the neck should be, while for the two head markers, one should go at the back of the skull, and the other forward. I'll adjust them in more detail later. But first, on to the detailed photo fitting. Here I'm going to take all of the leg joints and fit them to the size I want my actor's joints to be. This is just approximate and can be adjusted later. Now I'll zoom in on the hind legs to show you a better look at the proportions and positions of the leg joints. I want to resize the upper leg markers to the size I think the elephant's upper legs would be. It's almost like a chicken drumstick. The upper part will always be a bit larger. Therefore, for this elephant leg, the upper section should be a bit larger than the lower one. Next, I want to make sure that all the actor material is encompassed by the area surrounding the markers. Just click and drag the markers along the area border to enlarge the marker area. Now for the torso section. Since this elephant has quite a large rear end, we're going to take the number 4 marker that is used for the pelvis area on human characters and enlarge it significantly. Next I'll take the number 3 marker and place it where the neck is. I also need to set the size for the neck, so that's what I'm doing here. After I've positioned everything correctly, I'm going to expand the marker borders to encompass all of the actor material. Don't worry about how large or small these areas are, as long as all the active material is within. Now to take care of that big ol' nose she has. I'll enlarge the upper head marker area significantly and reposition it so that it encompasses all of the nose material. In this step, you don't have to worry too much about overlap. I'll go through all of the finished fitting that I've done on the elephant here, so you can see the proportion and position of all the markers I've laid. In the next step, I can easily mask out any of the overlapping material that I want. So for now, I'll just select Process to proceed to the next step. You'll see that the elephant is in a pretty funky pose here because of the fitting format. But don't worry about that right now, it can always be adjusted later. I'm going to save the actor fitting file and proceed to import my elephant to the stage. Again, I'll skip the facial fitting mode. I'll immediately enter the character composer now, and you'll see my elephant is in a super weird pose, with a partial front leg in the air. This is because it was included in the head marker area when I defined them earlier. I'll go through the hierarchy here now. Most of these parts I'll probably need in the future, except for the neck, so I'll delete that. Now the next step is to adjust the head section and mask out that odd looking fifth foot. To do that, I'll click the masking button which will open up Photoshop which is my default image editor. I'll follow the same procedure I did in section 1 of this tutorial by selecting the pen tool first. I need to outline the area of the front foot and delete it, so I'll do my best to outline that area that I want to mask out. Once that's completed, then I'll just turn it into a selection and delete it. After that, I'll save my file and open up Animator. Now you'll see that fifth leg is gone. I also want to readjust the position of the head to something not so grotesque. To do this, I'll enter into the Sprite Editor. This is where I can permanently rotate, reposition, and resize different body parts. I'll rotate the head section to something a bit more normal, and reposition it in the correct place. I'm now going to move on to the upper torso and mask out that area as well. 
In Photoshop, I want the neck area connecting to the head to be nice and rounded, as this normally makes for better animation results. I'll use the Circle Select tool first and position it in the correct place. The next step is to inverse the selection so I can edit the material outside that circle. I want to use the Eraser tool now to round out the upper part of the upper torso. Depending on your character, you'll have to experiment a little with how to proportion each body section. For this elephant, I imagine that its upper torso doesn't include its rear legs, so I'm using the pen tool again to select the area which I think should be included in the upper torso. Once I've selected that area, I'm going to do the same thing and inverse my selection, then select the eraser tool again and cut out all the area I don't need. Next, I'm going to use the clone stamp tool to blend in that section with the ear. I'll just hold Alt and select an area of the upper torso to use as a reference, and then click in the areas where I would like to replace the material. After I've done that, I can use the smudge tool to even out the edges a little bit so the texture looks smoother. Now I'll save that and test out my body rotation back in the composer. As you can see when I rotate the upper body, the results look not bad, however it might look a bit better if I adjust the hierarchy so that the upper torso is above the lower torso. I can go over to the scene manager, select the lower torso, and move it down in the hierarchy there. Now when I test the rotation, the results look a bit better. Now I'll demonstrate the ideal result to look for when masking the upper arm. I'll launch the body part in Photoshop once again, and then move right onto my pen selection tool. I want to smooth out the masking area here, so I'll create a nice rounded top so that the leg looks more natural when it animates. I can adjust the selection area after I've created it by using the reference points for each marker along the selection path like I'm doing here. I've used the clone stamp tool like in the previous step to erase the black shadow. Now I want to fade out the edges a little bit so they blend into the upper torso a bit better. To do this, I'm going to use the erase tool, but I'm going to select the brush with feathered edges so I can create a quick fading effect. As you can see, I'm running the eraser along the top and bottom joints of the upper arm, and the edges are becoming more faded as a result. After I save the body part, you'll see that when I test the part out back in the composer, now the edges don't seem as noticeable as they would if I hadn't have done any fading. This technique can be useful for characters that have small patterns in the material around the joint areas, such as this elephant does. Now if you take a look at this elephant's rear legs, it seems like he's missing one due to the image. This is okay because we can mask out the same area for the left and right leg, and change the appearance and position of one of the maskings to simulate a second leg. Right now, there are actually two layers that are positioned in the same area. To hide the left one which is in the front, I'll deselect it from the scene manager to the right. If I deselect it, you can see that the right leg now appears. That one looks a bit messy, so I'll follow the same procedures in the previous steps to mask out the unwanted material and blend in the pattern. Now because this is the rear foot, I want to make the material a little bit darker to simulate a shadow. I can accomplish this by using the burn tool and the clone stamp tool to adjust the material's appearance like I'm doing here. Now you can see that the whole leg is fairly well textured and masked, so I'll use the sprite editor here to adjust the foot position again. Then I'll repeat the same procedure that I did in the last step to make the leg look a bit darker. Now I'll reveal the left leg once again, and you can see that when I rotate it, the darker right leg appears behind. I can use the left leg as a reference to adjust any overlapping material or misplaced items like I'm doing here. Once I've made all the adjustments, I'll enter into the content manager and save my updates to my character. And there's one last thing. This elephant needs a tail. It seems to have disappeared with the masking, so what I'll do now is select the tail in the scene manager hierarchy. You can see there's nothing shown, so I need to enter the sprite editor to insert one. Luckily I have one pre-prepared. So I'll just select Insert, and then select my tail. Then I can reposition and resize the tail sprite so that it fits onto the elephant. It's also important to reposition the red marker, which represents the rotation joint for the tail. Once I've done this, I can rotate it around to see the results. Now back in stage mode, I can use the motion key editor to set a pose for the elephant, or even animate it. As you can see, each individual part can be moved around and edited, and the results look quite nice. You can do this with any four-legged creature. The masking and fitting process might take some work, but once you've established the best fit for your character, you'll be able to take your image of any creature and animate it easily using the various tools in Crazy Talk Animator.